Okay. Hey, hi. Hello. Hi, Jess. Hello, Catherine. So we are here after uh, an hour of uh, difficulties of trying to get Sarah on uh, on screen with us, uh, but unfortunately, due to uh, the technical difficulties that we have, we've been having, I think uh, we had to um, drop Sarah from yeah. the recording. Right. So yeah. So. Um, Catherine, so finally having you here and having everything recorded. So, how are you? How are you? And then tell us a bit of uh, when you when have you arrived to KL and uh, tell us about uh, tell us about that. When did you come here? First of all, I want to acknowledge that for the past one hour we have been trying to fix this online chat, and we have been trying to bring people on online. Screen. On and it didn't happen, which I felt probably is a good thing too. You know, it made me realize that actually in-person connection is more precious and that the technology might just not support anything that, you know, contains a human to human touch. Correct. So yeah, in a way I felt that, yeah, technologies are great to connect people from distance apart, but still, you know, person to person, heart to heart is still the best ever. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, yeah. And right. um, I arrived in KL two days ago and I went to Malacca and I was staying with a um, my good friend who owns the fermented vinegars uh, mm -hmm. at this factory, hang out with his family. It was all great and I enjoyed myself a lot. So mm -hmm. currently I'm in Kuala Lumpur uh, with um, my god sister who is like, you know, in the loft uh, mm -hmm. having my interview. So yeah, so here I am. Right, right. So, uh, I mean, uh, it's great to know that everything is going on well uh, for you uh, at your end. So, uh, moving on uh, to your um, workshops, right, to your mm -hmm. classes that you will be um, having at Just Live Shop, right? So, mm -hmm. could, tell, uh, could you tell us a bit more about your classes that you're going to host? Uh, I, um, I understand that there are going to be two uh, different classes, right? Right? So... Yeah. Yeah. So tell us more about the uh, both of the classes. Uh, what are you gonna uh, share with the audience briefly, uh, and why they should actually come and join your class? So what is the key takeaway from both classes? Right. Okay. Um. There are actually three workshops. One is coming up day after tomorrow, which is a vegan lipstick making class. Uh huh. We don't have a lot of registrations yet for that. Mm -hmm. Um. That is going to be at one of the farmer's market, which the address I'm not really sure about. Um, the organizer is going to drive me there. Mm -hmm. and the next day on the 7th, we have two classes, one in the morning, which is a tofu making class. And then mm -hmm. in the evening is going to be a raw vegan making um, cake making class. Mm -hmm. so, um, well, why people should come to this course? Well, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, everyone, okay, every, anyone, who wants a healthy living and who wants to connect uh, with not just food making but also a spiritual aspect towards you know making food then you know I invite them to come but it is not a um, pushy selling kind of event you know I believe that um, human to human person to person connection is definitely connected with um, a karma you know mm -hmm. and also that would bring people together so if let's say I'm meant to meet some students I would definitely meet them no matter what and for me being a presenter a teacher an educator a consultant my duty or my responsibility is to actually bring value to people who attend the workshop even if it's just one student or if it's a hundred or ten it doesn't matter it's not about the quantity it's about me connecting with them and bring value to them so that it will um, bring them happiness, health, bliss, and joy. Ah, okay. I mean, that sounds very authentic. That is something very genuine from you, I guess. Very authentic, um, uh, authentic way of approaching people. And I think um, something very genuine coming from you. So I, I, it's very heartwarming to hear that you are uh, very eager to actually uh, see the participants, to connect with them, to actually... Um, uh, engage with them and also to uh, teach them about uh, vegan living, right? So, speaking about uh, the uh, first course, right? So, could you tell us a bit more about uh, about about the first class, about the first course that you're going to be hosting? Basically, you know, I have been trained as an image consultant and then later on a life coach, an art teacher, and now I'm moving towards into food making. Uh -huh. as 
the eco living aspect. And for me, my main duty or my main um, mission in this life is really to bring people closer to their heart because we're living in a world that is so um, filled with technologies that, you know, we are bombarded by stress every day that actually disconnect us from who we are as a human being. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we feel disconnected from people, you know, mm -hmm. and work is really about connecting people with their heart and when we make things we engage our fingers you know and yes. in Chinese medicine all our fingers are actually connected to our heart mm -mm -mm. you know so this whole workshop you know whether it's um, making lipsticks or making foundation making cake tofu whatever mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. really about bringing people to engage their hands on mm -hmm something so that when they are making they experience themselves you know they mm. their heart. so it could be just an hour event it could be two hours but the whole idea is actually through me as a tool mm -hmm. to bring them closer to words experiencing themselves mm -hmm. yeah, so mm -hmm. the whole thing I'm just like a facilitator I'm mm -hmm. there to get them to experience themselves mm -hmm. so it's not about me you know I'm not there to show how great I am because I am all these tools and knowledge I'm sure there are a lot of teachers out there teaching the same thing mm -hmm. the manner of delivery is different so when people attend the workshops they come they share my energy they share mm -hmm. my um, knowledge and then through that exchange we have a learning giving and taking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. teaching at the same time I'm also learning and they are the student learning and at the same time they are also teaching so it's actually a give and take. There are two ways. There's no one teacher or mm -hmm. one student. It's always mutual. And I believe that to be very real. And I wrote it in my book as well, Playing to Lose, the second book that I had. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. yes. It's gonna be, the book is going to be available at Just Live as well as um, a few locations that I'm going to just distribute for, um, you know, sharing. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So speaking about the... Um, lipstick making class right so what intrigued me was um i was just thinking what made you to um come up with this idea of making vegan lipstick because it's it's very it's something that is not um uh, uh, widely available out there right so what why do we need to go for natural products and uh, what is the uh downsides of you know having the uh products that's that we already uh, you be already used to right now in the market so right. what are the differences and why what sparked that that you know that idea uh, there are classes you know there are workshops in thailand in us canada australia that teaches people how to make vegan lipsticks mm -hmm. uh, and actually what sparked me to do this mm -hmm. okay, was through my friend who is an air stewardess she works mm -hmm. at the pacific I heard something. Ah. So she was using a lot. She's using. And she, yeah, I heard someone talking. Uh, okay. And yeah, can you hear? Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, she was using a lot of um, lipstick that later on she suggested, you know, how nice that would be if I could make vegan lipsticks. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to present her a present a gift. And therefore, I started making presents for her. And in the process, you know, I had my cafe, Bliss Pure Foods, and I mm -hmm. thought it was nice to share with people, you know, the natural aspect of like, natural products. You know, using the lipstick that are natural. And when we make it ourselves, you know, it's not that difficult. It's cheaper too, you know. Out in stores, there are many vegan lipsticks, but they cost like probably about eighteen dollars to twenty-five easily. But when we mm -hmm. make it ourselves, it's going to be much cheaper. Ah, uh, okay. lipstick actually are uh, very cancerous, and you know it leads to breast cancer. Right. And, you know, actually, when we apply, you know, those commercial lipsticks, we are actually putting ourselves, our health, at risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those chemicals. Yes. So, you yes. Know, you can see all the names of the chemicals. You know, one whole Leaf. list. Plumbum. Yeah, a lot of you them. Name it. You name it, go research on them, you know, and you can see how damaging it is to our health. And, you know, there is, you know, you can look beautiful and natural, you know, and at the same time, it's not going to cost your health. 
and you're not going to suicide, you know, you're not going to kill yourself out of being beautiful. You can look beautiful and natural, you know, Correct. without costing the earth, without Correct. costing your health. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, actually, um, the reason why I asked, asked you um, how you got the idea of making um, the vegan lipstick is because I was having problems with my lips because my lips turned to be very chappy after using the normal um, lipstick that we can get in the retail stores, right? So that is when I actually switched to um, uh, handmade lipsticks from my friend. I actually got a, a, a handmade lipstick from my friend and, and it is much better, you know, it is, uh, I don't have any problems with my lips right now. So uh, this is why I was very uh, intrigued on your first class actually. So yeah. So. Moving on to the second class, it's about tofu making, right? Mm -hmm. Tofu making. And um, tell us a little bit about the normal tofu and um, uh, the tofu, the, the vegan tofu that you are making. Okay, this tofu on the Sabbath that we are making is actually a black, organic black bean sprouted tofu. So it's not just mm -hmm. the normal soya bean tofu that is actually mostly genetically modified. So. Uh -huh. I'm actually uh, enhancing the nutritional value a little bit more by using organic and it is mm -hmm. black which is very good for you know darkening your hair you know black mm -hmm. beauty um, and by sprouting it you increase the nutritional value the protein level mm -hmm. yeah so you know actually it looks just the same like soya bean tofu but it mm -hmm. tastes much better yeah and people who come to the class can actually try and learn um and the thing is out of my experiences of teaching this class in nepal and um, thailand and different places when i share with people whether in families or in classes workshops what i noticed is that every student when they try making the tofu each tofu tasted differently and all my students wow. also yeah, they tried the tofu and they said, oh, why, you know, the recipe is the same, but everybody has a different taste in their tofu. Mm -hmm. as this is what I want. Because every one of us has different energies in our head. We hold different thoughts and our thoughts really affect the kind of food that we eat. So when mm -hmm. we eat food, we can see, you know, like, and we can exchange and learn from one another. Okay, how do I make my food taste better? Or how can I improve my food better? You know, what kind of thoughts should I channel into my food making? Should it be like more patience or more, um, you know, loving kindness or just more focus? Ah, yeah. okay, <laughs> right. So it yeah. looks differently. Mm. So the third one, right, the third class, the third class that you're going to host, is about the cake making right cake making is um well i learned cake making you know the vegan way as well as the raw way and you know this class on the seventh in the afternoon is actually a very basic class it is meant for people who love sweet desserts but they want it the healthy way uh, you know, uh, uh. they have like a di diabetes at home you know who cannot take a lot of sugar and who cannot take sugar at all actually if they are like having diabetes type 2 and so you know this vegan raw vegan cake will show people how do they make um healthy cakes basic ingredients nuts ingredients if they are not uh, nuts allergic so and how do they use natural sweeteners like dates you know maple syrup and how do they decorate the cake beautifully so that it looks beautiful and appealing at the same time very healthy Mm, okay, right, right. If there, there are like raw food chefs out there um, who wants to learn the decoration part, then that's probably that could be a new possibility to look into, you know, like maybe wagashi style, the Japanese of decorating, combining the Japanese wagashi method onto a cake. It could be possible. I mean, food making is very creative. And being an ex art teacher, I know that, you know, creativity is not just limited to Fantastic. one. Fantastic. Yeah, there's so much. To explore and there is no right or wrong it's just bring your passion bring your beliefs bring your love into what you do and especially mm. as human energies transferred so you know as long as you put a right intention you have the right motivation whatever food you make 
you know, it's going to turn out great. Right. Absolutely. Fantastic. I mean, um, listening this from you is just so very, you know, it makes me feel very intrigued about your classes. And I think, um, okay, uh, talking about your new book, right? The Bliss Pure Food, uh, right? The new book that you're going to uh, publish soon. So uh, tell us a little bit more. Um, I was just wondering, is the recipes that you're gonna um the classes that you're gonna host are the recipes available in the book yes okay, that, yeah. uh -huh. all the workshops that i will be conducting you know from now until the next probably future books are available in that book bliss pure foods the reason why i'm doing so is because that could be actually a textbook for people to actually um you know reflect and use and yet you know play around with it it's not like a exact recipe that you have to follow. It's just like a guideline for people to play around with ingredients and to, to be creative in the kitchen. So yeah. having this, you know, that is aligned with the book will help people to play um, within the space where they would feel comfortable, you know, like being guided. Mm -hmm. Right, right, I, exactly. I mean, uh, I, I think um, um, this class would be, um, snippet like you know you're gonna give uh, a summary kind of a, a summary from the books um will you be sharing more uh, about the books about the book uh, to your audience yes um most of the participants they will know where to purchase the books and people who happen to listen to this interview are interested to get this book they can go to amazon or can and um, what else? Well, this book, all the recipes came from my experience of working in an ashram as an assistant chef, as well as my experiences out of traveling, you know, all over in the world, you know, in different kitchens um, with different chefs, with different housewives, just daily normal people who loves to cook. And also my own experiences of, you know, working in the kitchen. You know, I make my food most of the time. Right, know? right. Um, so... Mm -hmm. um uh, uh the thing is about uh, your book will it be available um is the signed copy of your book you know or will it be available uh during the classes at kiel well now no because i have to travel to taiwan to have them printed so they will be ready right right i mean uh, i mean it, i think it would be uh fantastic to have that physical book during the classes but um are there any um chances for uh, readers or probably those who are watching this video right now is there any chance for them to buy a signed copy by you or you know uh, uh, yeah they, have you actually given a thought about it <laughs> they can like my facebook page bliss pure foods which mm -hmm. is the name of my facebook, um, you know the, the cafe that i owned uh, in Nepal and mm -hmm. so that pitch itself has a lot of information and I'm going to put up a pre-order link sometime in May for people to order them and probably uh -huh. access to some discount uh, mm -mm -mm. order them and make a payment and then later on uh, it's going to be on Amazon as well and also on my website blissepurefoods.com exactly exactly but i i think uh, having a signed copy is always a joy i think for any reader right you know to be able to interact with the author and to be able to get the um you know book signed is something really spectacular for for any readers <laughs> for as a matter of fact right yeah be so lovely to to have all the books signed you know i'll just you know. <laughs> them and put it somewhere so that people can have their hands on it exactly exactly so tell us a little bit more about your future plans about uh, books your your book and also your um, recipes are you going to tr are you going to write more books to accommodate more recipes or are there any live events that you're going to host for your books so um, yeah my vision for whatever work that i'm doing is really basically to connect with more people and to you know, through my, through myself being myself, you know, to get them get connected with their own heart, be it food making, be it music, I'm a musician as well, and then be it designing. Um, but, you know, food making, I find it very um, easy for people to go within themselves, you know, because it's fun, it's mm. playful. So I intend to travel around, you know, meeting different people, bring, you know, workshops, 
and then sharing more playfulness with people, you know, because mm -hmm. in the kitchen there is going to be a lot of um, explorations and also a lot of creativity. Mm, right, right. Okay. So um, the next question would be on um, what motivated you to be a vegan? Like, what, you know, I were you you know were you adapting to this lifestyle since you were a child or yeah when did that happen actually i love vegetarianism when i was young you know i always feel very happy when my mom gives me vegetarian food but you know my mom um she she had the thought of like you know as a kid you have to eat meat to be stronger so you know in the process i had a lot of health issues when i was uh, when i was much younger Mm -hmm. and, um, you know what happened was that I had asthma, I had eyesight problem, I had allergies, and along the way, when I was about nineteen, I went to an ashram. I visited an ashram in USA, and that was when I was given the space to be a full fledged vegan. Ah. And in the states, I. I uh, learned yoga. I learned Sanskrit chanting and meditation. And then, you know, every meal we had was basically organic. Mm. You know? And then I noticed that my complexion started changing. My eyes became brighter and uh, my asthma was gone. I don't wear specs anymore. And even if I wear specs, it's mainly for, you know, like filtration of UV. Mm. You know? right. And so my energy got better. So as a vegetarian, as a vegan, you know, I feel, uh, you know, my health much better and my vitality is definitely higher, you know. Mm -hmm. So a lot, a lot of benefits, um, you know, that I have personally shared in my book as well, thanks to me. and also in this new, um, these pure foods. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay, so the next question would be like, you know, okay, for anybody who's, you know, busy going to work, committing to work, coming back, and you know, um, any for anyone who is complaining, saying that they don't have enough time to make healthy food, and you know, uh, they don't have e even have time to make their own food. How um, how do you think um, the recipes that you have um, given in the book is going to help? Like, you know, how how convenient uh, do you think it is? going to be like you know to from getting the ingredients see so uh tell us a little bit more about that like how is it um uh, applicable to our daily lives like you know is it something that's easy to do yeah you know i'm not gonna do like a sales talk for my book but honestly i tell all my friends it's a matter of how committed are you to yourself mm -mm, mm -hmm. how much do you love yourself mm -hmm. You know, if you buy a book, any recipe book, if you are not committed to your health, no matter how simple a recipe can be, you will never get to making it. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. It's not about how simple or easy the recipe book is. It mm -hmm. is about how much do you love yourself? How much mm -hmm. do you love your health? How much time are you able to devote mm -hmm. to your health? You know, it's all about loving yourself. If you do not care about your body and your health, even if I were to give you a, um, you know, King Chef Bible with all the best recipes that you can make within a few minutes or seconds, you will never lay your finger on it and you would never be, be able to benefit from it. It's almost like, you know, a sick person going to a doctor and say, you know, I'm sick. And the doctor mm -hmm. gives patient some medicine and say, okay, please take this in the morning, in the, you know, in the, mm -hmm. in the evening. And all the person did was to take the medicine and then, you know, place it somewhere and wish that, oh, may I get well from my sickness? And I will get well from my sickness. <laughs> Eat the medicine. Exactly. So, you know, the book is there. You know, not just my book. Every book is out there, you know. Mm. According to your needs, you know. My kind of book is more of like an Asian-West mixed fusion. And then, you know, out of my own experiences that I felt benefited me, I share with whoever, who, whoever will feel connected with the work I'm doing. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, so Fantastic. People can choose. People can choose. They have the whole freedom to choose what will work for them. And the book is not like a must be the only way out. No. You know, mm -hmm. feel free. Feel free to play. Feel free to tear up the book even. Tear up the pages. Feel free to scribble on the pages. You know, write on it. 
you know, yeah. I purposely actually, you know, purposely um, left some mistakes in the pages, you know, some of them, you know, I had question marks on it. <laughs> I want to see if people spot that um, mistake on the page and, you know, ah, okay. it's not that- like, I didn't intend, I didn't want it to be like, you know, totally flawless. It would be nice to see if people can spot that. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay, so ha- has anyone spotted that before? Uh, well, so far, no. <laughs> and so far. Oh, a friend who, who told me a joke, I think it was my uncle who sent me a message a um, few weeks ago. And he, he said this, like, you know, an author had two books, pub- uh, a book published. And the title was mistakenly printed as how to change your wife in two weeks. <laughs> millions of copies and then when he realized that he made a wrong mistake in the title he changed his book back to how to change your life in two weeks he actually uh-huh. made three copies ah, okay. <laughs> i was saying you know my uncle was joking so probably it's nice to have mistakes in future it would be you know instead of having like a having it flawless exactly i think uh, it's all part in it's all part in parcel of life i guess it is it, 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 i think what you're trying to say is that just to be natural as natural as authentic as possible it's natural. not it, yeah, yeah it's, it's not like trying to create something that is error free i think right i think that is what you're trying to say so uh, you're trying to be more authentic you're try, trying to be yourself you're just trying to put everything that you know you feel that is beneficial for the um, readers out there or um those who are interested in vegan lifestyle out there so i think it is more about just being relaxed just being yourself you know it, it, something like that but i want right. to ask that it's not just about being vegan or being a raw foodist or being a vegetarian it's about being human you know i've Mm -hmm. seen a lot of people who are on raw food i i've been on raw food for six years i've Mm -hmm. also been for like the past 20 years and then Mm. well and i've seen like you know what i i have noticed that you know we have failed to really question our motivation for being a vegetarian vegan or raw foodist are we being so just to prove that we are better than someone else or we are doing so out of the motivation to be kinder to the environment and to the people around us and to ourselves as well are we being more human in the process if let's say we are just being a vegetarian so that we can look down on the non-vegetarians if we are being vegan so that we look down on the vegetarians or we are being in the being a raw food is to look down on whoever. Then I mm. think motivation is off. You know, you're just building more pride, more arrogance, and more selfish selfishness within yourself. The whole idea about being a vegan, a vegetarian, or a raw food is just so that you can be more authentic with yourself, to be healthier. Why do you want to be healthier? So that you have a longer lifespan. And why do I want to have a longer lifespan? Maybe you want to, you know, um, you know, practice more meditation, help more people, you know, whatever, you know, it, your motivation has to be very clear. Exactly. It, the motivation has to come from a right place. It's mm-hmm. not from an egoistic perspective of just me, myself, I, me, myself alone, you know. Exactly. I think, I think, I mean, when, when you were talking about, um, you know, this being this vegetarian, it's, it's like, you know, I think it's like becoming a trend. Okay, it's yeah. becoming a trend. It's, it's like becoming the next big cool thing, right? It's like the next big cool thing, and people are just picking it up, you know, for the sake of uh, adapting uh, to the uh, to the to the, to the trend, right? So, so I think you highlighted a very important point of you know questioning your purpose. Um, the whole idea of being a vegetarian is actually you know ahimsa you know in sanskrit we call it ahimsa which means non-violence you know we do not want to harm another being even if we have the condition and the rights to do so that is being mm. you know what is non-violence it's not you know just not killing not harming it's not about like it's not just that it is when you have the condition and the rights to do so but you choose not to do it Mm-hmm. And my teacher, my spiritual teacher, always say this thing. He said, "If you cannot help someone, at least don't harm them." Yeah, I think I think, I think he he said something that's very wise. Uh, it's a very it's a very wise saying, I guess, uh, and it is very true because um, if you cannot, I mean, even if it's um, you know uh, a cow or chicken or just let it be, you know, anything. If, um, I mean, it, it, what makes you feel that, you know, being a human being is actually one step higher than those animals or those um, beings, right? So I, I don't think so that um, 
we as a human, um, you know, the Bible says that the Bible says that too. You know, do not do unto your neighbor what you do not wish for yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So no beings would enjoy having a throat to their, uh, I mean, a knife to their throat. You know, no beings would want fear and death. You know, no exactly. beings would want to be hurt. You know, if human beings don't enjoy that, what makes us think that we have that special um, power to do this unto another being? thinking that we're more superior and that we are more powerful and therefore we can do that. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't agree with that, no. I mean, people who say, you know, well, there are people who could comment on this, oh, vegetarians, you guys are just too much. You know, if you don't, <laughs> eat, if you don't eat the animal, the animal is going to get eaten by some other animal. Mm. Uh, it, this can go on and on and on and on. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I share this with people. We notice that animals, like we, we talk about the law of gravity, yeah? As humans, mm -hmm. how do we take plant-based diet? Because plants, they grow upwards towards the sun, towards the sun, and they receive the sun energy. So when we take food that is grown towards the light, we embrace the energy of the universe, the sun, the, mm. the animals around us, you know? But animals like us, you know, we, our heart, our organs are subjected to gravity. So everything is pulled down mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. the earth you know so the energy is actually pulling us down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. when we yes. take whatever food it becomes our energy correct yeah exactly. Why, you know, observe, observe people observe look around people who are on vegetarian diet like you know not just those fake mock products i'm not talking about that but who goes on like meditation they take very sattvic you know in in um, ayurvedic there is this three types of food sattvic rajasic tamasic yeah mm -hmm. sattvic is something that is of the light is natural mm -hmm. and raw food lies in that as well and then rajasic is like when it's like very flavorful a lot of spices chili onion garlic which is mm -hmm. like to the senses and mm -hmm. then tamasic is where you know, everything is like dull, fried, um, you know, that doesn't have any much, much, not much life force. So mm. when people, the kind of food that they eat, actually it comes out in their energy. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you want to be younger, you want to look younger, you want to feel younger, you, you want to have more energy, um, you know, try out, change, shift your diet a little bit. If people are non-vegetarians, I encourage them. I won't say like, okay, go full vegetarian and go full raw the next day. You know, mm -hmm. like, follow your heart. You know, if you can, reduce meat. You know, mm -hmm. try up with like probably a salad a day, you know. Or if you can, like try maybe every first, you know, month, 15th of the calendar month, full moon, new moon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And play around with your diet and see, you know, your body is going to tell you, okay, what feels better. Um, I have a lot of friends who went from meat eating to vegetarian diet or vegan diet and they actually look so much better now. Their skin, skin cleared up, they look brighter, they felt much more alive and they don't have any more bad dreams, you know. Mm. A lot of sharings, I mean, from people who have been on like, you know. I, I, think, I think the whole idea of it is, is just to be true to yourself, just to love yourself more. Um, just to make sure that you are being given uh, the right nutrition, okay, You're, you are being caring towards your own body. I think that's the whole idea of it, to get started, you know, just to be true to yourself, right? You have, so, you have, so to, yeah. Yeah, you have to know that you deserve the best. You have um, to know that you, know, you are worthy mm -hmm. of a better life. You know, mm -hmm. and saying so, it means that your body is not a graveyard. You know, it's more than, it's much, 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 much more than that. You have to feed your body with something that nourishes you, that you feel loved, you feel cared. Not food that abuses you and treats you like a graveyard. Or exactly. Right. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. So the next big question is that... Um, like what you said, you know, you, even your mom, you said, you mentioned earlier that your mom has this um, belief that, you know, by eating meat, you're actually giving more nutrients to your body, right? I think so many people out there actually share the same sentiment uh, as your mother. Even my mother was, you know, like that. They believe that, you know, when you eat, when you eat more meat, it's good for your body. So how does um, uh, that, that, being vegan? Uh, that was <laughs> 
fast though. My mom actually now she also tries out vegetarian food, mm -hmm. even though she's not fully um hundred percent vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Because of uh, red meat, and mm -hmm. uh, she actually does um you know shed that vegetarian food is very healthy. Like you know a lot of vegetables, no mock stuff. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean she also appreciates healthy eating. Mm -hmm. So so yeah. So how do you think? How do you think that being a vegan, I mean, it would not affect the kind of nutrients that you're you're giving your body. Like you know, um, so many people out there they have this uh, assumption that you know when you're a vegetarian or if you're a vegan, you're not actually feeding your your body. Your body is not getting enough nutrients. So um, is this is this right? Or uh, you know, what is your perception? What is your idea about this? Every food has intelligence and you know being a vegetarian does or vegan it doesn't mean that you are just feeding yourself on salads and that's all or fruits and that's all there are a lot of herbs there are a lot of super herbs super fruits um, super um, foods you know fruits mm -hmm. foods that have a lot of nutritional value and you do not have to take a lot of them like you know spirulina coconut oil cacao maca you know my friend david wolf he wrote a really um great book that i would recommend people to you know get a hand on them mm -hmm. um you know he doesn't pay me for promoting him but i think he has fabulous work whether mm -hmm. people appreciate or know about it a lot uh, or or not um the superfoods super mm -hmm. food book that's written by him which he listed all the super food and super herbs that people should definitely learn about mm -hmm. um, honey, you know uh, durians mango stein there's so many cacao spirulina mm -hmm. afa algae um, and also um, longevity now which he talks about detoxing you know it's like detoxing is actually more important than nutrition a lot of times we mm -hmm. work ourselves with a lot of things but we do not also unload so actually, mm -hmm. yeah. our body is also very important. Yeah. Um, and he also had this Sun Food Diet book. Um, uh -huh. beauty, um, uh, there is a beauty book that he talks about, you know, eating for beauty, exactly. Mm -hmm. for beauty. I, I mean, I love his book. It's very concise. It has a lot of information and definitely something that we can learn from. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Uh, I mean, the part that he talked talked about detoxing is um, something very crucial because I don't think so many people are actually paying attention to um, detoxing like you know unloading whatever they have you know, I, do, I do coffee in the mail like there's this um, tube bag with a, uh -huh. with a bag with a tube that goes into your anus uh -huh, uh -huh. with coffee like organic coffee and you just poke it in and you you know sort of have a flush I mean that uh -huh. you know, on and off at home uh, you know, and I think it's very good. I enjoy it because you know, whenever I feel like that's a, when I was in Nepal, and I feel like no matter how healthy I eat, sometimes I have like slight migraine because right. the lesion or probably uh, something you know just it wasn't right. I would just boil myself some organic coffee, and Nepal has really good coffee grains. So I'll just mm -hmm. powder my coffee and you know boil a coffee, let it cool, and pour into my bag, and I have the tube, you know, and I do my coffee enema, and then the next. Uh -huh. For 30 minutes, the next thing was the headache was gone, my complexion becomes clean again, and I felt like my energy became lighter. Sometimes wow. it just feels so heavy and you feel it. You feel tired, you feel lethargic, and you do not know what actually happened. Probably too much food, too much oil, mm -hmm. dirty, um, you know. Mm -hmm. you yeah, so what is your, any, any other next book idea that you're having? Um, to write uh, any other book ideas that you're working on at this point of time? Currently, no, actually. I, um, you know, I write whenever I feel inspired, but you know, mm -hmm. recently I felt like it would be really nice to also explore the areas of relationships and love. Mm. Ah, okay. I think I would be wanting to listen more about that actually from you because I've been following your um, page for quite some time and I think you have very, um, very insightful quotes and a very insightful posts being shared on your page and i think i will be i will be definitely looking forward to that right so coming back to your uh, event uh, that is going to happen in, like in a couple of days more to go um what is your expectation and what do you want to tell people out there and also to your participants that's uh, that are going to join you uh, in the event so yeah 
honestly, I have no expectations. You know, I always, you know, <laughs> if my organizers hear this interview, I always tell them enroll as many people as you can, minimally twenty. <laughs> uh -huh. At the uh -huh. end of the day, I um, if, even if it's just a few participants, I'll still show up for the class because you know, um, I believe that people who show up, no mm -hmm. matter it's one or many, they show up. To, 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 to have something to learn that will benefit them. Correct. So if I can do something for just that one person, why not? Wow, okay, very thoughtful of you. And I, I hope that, you know, um, I hope that more participants will be actually joining in. It's just not the minimum, uh, you know, minimum quantity of people that's gonna join you. So yeah, yeah. whatever, yeah. whatever it is, is always perfect if it's uh -huh. one, Perfect. If it's two, is perfect. If it's twenty, is perfect. Uh -huh. And you know, if let's say financially it's not doable, then I just have to be upfront and tell people, okay, you know, this is not doable because I have to eat and pay my rental. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. But as long as you know it's doable and viable, why not? And mm. you know, what I really wish for people who show up at mm -hmm. whatever events or you know wherever I connect uh, mm -hmm. with. Um, be it here or overseas, wherever I travel to, my main focus is always about bringing value and joy to them. Like in Japan, mm. we have a program coming up on the 12th to 15th of um, April, where we have participants from China, from Japan, from Singapore coming to join us. Awesome. And it's the same thing too. The whole idea is about presenting value to them and happiness and joy, you know, connect. Right. Correct. I think it's it's more about you connecting with um, participants um, and uh, being a memorable uh, instructor, class instructor. I think I think that uh, that is the most important thing of all, right? I mean, it's not just about um, trying to host a class and then you know you just um, say bye and you just part ways, right? So I think it's about the amount of impact that you can have on on someone that that really really matters. Right. Yes. So, um, your book yes. is it going to be available on uh, in in any of the bookstores in Malaysia? I'm not sure because bookstores <laughs> they take a huge percentage out of um, all authors. Oh yes, yes. Books on the shelves. Sad yes. to say, um, you know, it would be a nice publicity for uh, and you know probably a good um promotion for authors. But mm -hmm. having experience for my first book. I feel like it would be nice. I mean, if I can place them uh, in book bookstores, that doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, have. Ah, yes, yes. I nice have the books even better in um, cafes, vegan cafes all over the world. You know, wherever yeah. I travel to, be it U.S., Canada, Australia, mm -hmm. where, you know, China, and anywhere is possible. I am available for the universe to use me. Ah, that is like you know more like a. The service to the uh, world, right? Yeah, I wish that the marvel will recruit me the next day. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think for the amount of generosity that you have and the amount of um, zest, uh, energy that you're giving out, I am very sure that you will be having a very successful class at KL uh, in, uh, in 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 two two days to come, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's about less than two days, I think. So it's it's going coming very soon. So I, I yes, I am very sure that it's going to be a blast. So, um, uh, I would wish you all the best for your upcoming upcoming classes and uh, tell us where um authors, I mean uh, readers or uh, anyone that is viewing this video right now, this live interview right now, how could they connect with you? Okay, first of all, Facebook, please, uh -huh. uh -huh. and um, personal Facebook account, Catherine Sunanta. Uh -huh. um, we know Catherine Sunanta, and there is a Tibetan name next to my um, name, which is called Yang Jian Tso. Uh -huh. uh, I'm very connected to the Tibetan community, and I also wish to be of service to them and encouraging more Tibetans to be vegetarians. Uh -huh. Um, and that's why in the near future, I would also love to make more food videos in Tibetan language. Oh. Yes, or Chinese language, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, in that way more people can benefit from it. Like, right. Yeah. 
let's say it can be of value and benefit to people, it would be great to be. Awesome, you. right? So, so Instagram, Bliss Pure Foods. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes, I I I found you on Instagram, and I, <laughs> I'm following you on Instagram. I have a yes. new Twitter account. It's just that it's so hard to follow up with so many social media thing, and I also YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I have to get myself more comfortable with social media. Mm -hmm. And I think probably the key over here is to find one social media that really works for you and then that's how you grow it, right? I mean, you grow your network uh, to the new um, social media. So I think that the key for any social media uh, marketing is always like, you know, you focus on one thing, then, you know, you grow it. So yeah, I think, I think we are all learning about that. So last but not least, anything that you would want to tell us or any, any, any takeaway message that you would want to tell us before we end this um, interview? I always love to end with follow your bliss. Uh -huh. Your uh -huh. bliss, your heart, your mind. Your mind is very important. Your mind can be your friend or your enemy. Mm -hmm. And when your mind is in a good place, when you think positive thoughts that makes you feel good, um, you will never screw yourself up. You don't want to mm -hmm. screw yourself up. Mm -hmm. You know, and what I mean by that is having a positive mind that is free from anger, jealousy, greed, pride, and ignorance. And how do you do that is when you cultivate renunciation, compassion, faith, love, and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And all comes with own inner cultivation and the practicing of your mind. And it doesn't come instantly. We are still human beings. We experience our negative emotions on and off. It comes and it goes. But the whole process is about, you know, being human, knowing that, okay, you have all this um, inner mental afflictions. And how do you overcome them? How do you actually study them? And how do you actually use them? to become your good friends instead of self-sabotaging yourself. Mm -hmm. Like in the world where it's so competitive, people compete, you know, against one another. We feel like we are not connected. We feel that another person is our enemy. Uh, it's just yeah. not true. You know, everyone that you meet is a reflection of who you are. If you dislike someone, if you're jealous about someone, it's always about within yourself. If you're always attracting something that doesn't work in your life it is always a reflection of yourself yeah. i almost feel like getting life coaching from you so i think you should also consider life coaching <laughs> i think i think you will you will do really excellent you know or if you were to continue with your uh, life coaching as well like you know i think uh, it will be very fantastic to hear you you speaking about spirituality and about being mindful and you know how to actually eliminate the negative energies. I think it is all connected, even with your work about um, bliss be our food. I think it is all connected. It's all about energy. It's all about uh, taking in the good energy and uh, uh, expelling the bad ones, right? So. Yes, so I mean, it was a, a very uh, fruitful uh, interview with you. I feel really, really good. I mean, although in the beginning, I wish Sarah, you know, could could be with us still to, until now, uh, but unfortunately, I think she uh, is not. We uh, she is not able to join us uh, due to technical difficulties. You would join. But still, <laughs> yes, but still, I think uh, we, we will be able to uh, share the live uh, video recording to everyone out there and uh, I am uh, hoping to uh, get updates on your event. So I'm, I'm, I'm literally waiting to, you know, get more updates from you, live updates from you, from Just Like Shop and also from you, from your uh, Facebook page, uh, Bliss Pure Fruits. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, hoping to hear from you real soon, uh, Sunanda. I mean, it is a pleasure to have you today. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight. And uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to hear more from you. More pictures, more updates, more live videos from you, from the event. Yeah, so tell us uh, how it went, um, you know, how your how your classes are going, you know. In, probably you can do some live videos or something, right? So yeah, thank you so much for joining. I also want to thank you for, um, you know, your time to set this up. I know we've been trying to fix this for the past one hour and finally... Correct. Correct. Yeah. For your patience and for your diligence and hard work. And also, thank you so much for all the questions that you have asked. I uh, really enjoyed speaking with you and mm -hmm. I really look forward to, you know, connecting with you in person somewhere mm -hmm. in Malaysia. 
Yeah, sure. you are. Yeah, soon, soon. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, in person. Exactly, exactly. Yes. So, um, unfortunately, I'm having a live. Uh, I mean, I'm having a photo shoot on the sixth uh, of April. So. Yeah, I will be uh, occupied on that. But uh, yeah, I will definitely be looking forward to, to meeting you in person the yeah. next time, you know, uh, whenever you are here or whenever you are in Singapore, because basically Singapore is just like, you know, half an hour from from where I stay. So yeah, yeah. So uh, looking forward to seeing you in person. And thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah, I will be sending you the link to the live video once it's yeah. all up on, on YouTube. So. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good night. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. bye.